Um, and uh, let us take uh, a few uh, questions um, uh, regarding what our uh, dear speakers have mentioned. Uh, one of the questions uh, that Sister Fariha, I have for you, you mentioned that um, these people who are uh, filled with hate or apparently that seem filled with hate, there's a soft spot. How do we get to how do we get to that soft spot? What is what is uh, a quick and easy thing that you think we should do in order to reach that spot, hard spot, or a uh, soft spot, or uh, you know, engage them? So um, uh, I'm not an expert, definitely, uh, but it seems like you know, mashallah, other two speakers can chime in later on as well. I feel that um, I need. I mean, we need to connect with people. Um, uh, you know, with, with all the, um, you know, or, you know, being a human being, not as a Muslim, not as a preacher, not as a da'i. We just need to first connect with other people, just like, you know, I'm a mother, I'm a wife. I need to talk to my neighbor um, in, in being in those shoes. So not just, you know, bombarding them with information, uh, maybe sure. just sending them up you know, a, a cake, a sending them a box of chocolate first right. and then sharing, you know, okay, I have five kids, the, the, you know, what are your kids are doing? How do they get to the sure. college? Sure. So, you know, I, I just feel that at humanly right. level, we need to connect with them. Yeah, very good. Uh, Dr. Osama or Imam uh, Rafiq, have you encountered a situation? I know Dr. Osama, you do a lot of, uh, mashallah, interfaith work and uh, Imam uh, Rafiq, you're out there uh, all the time with uh, supervising and managing uh, the relief work. Um, do you have you encountered a situation uh, where someone was filled with hate, filled with anger at what you're doing, or just just because that you're a Muslim and comes and bombards at you? And, and you know, how did you handle that situation? Imam Rafiq. Imam Rafiq, you're muted. Can you unmute? Imam well, Rafiq, you seem to be muted. Go, go ahead, uh, Dr. Sam. When we were building the Islamic Center, I remember really this really well. Uh, someone came and was really upset. And he said, I am here. And I said to him, yes, I can see you. And he said, I am here to let you know that you are going to hellfire. I, I told him, well, if I am going to hellfire, at least show me some sympathy. Feel bad about it. <laughs> Why are you so excited about someone going to hellfire? Uh, he said he did not accept Jesus and this and that. He said, I said to him, well, if you want me to accept Jesus, at least you have to be nice with me. If you want, uh, if you want me to be saved and accept the Christ, I mean, um, you are not doing a good job so far. Uh, and uh, if I am your enemy, the Bible uh, taught you to pray for me. You should pray for me. And I asked him, did you have, did you ever travel to convert people to Christianity? He said, yes. I, I said to him, don't you think it's an nonsense for you to travel all of the way to Africa, taking off and paying expenses and all of this and trying to be super nice to convince someone in Africa to accept the Christ and I am here in the neighborhood and you choose to be mean with me. Uh, uh, this is happening. Uh, uh, I remember really well because he came to the office. Yes, yes. Imam Rafiq, did you experience anything? Uh, the people in East Tennessee are wonderful people. <laughs> okay, mashallah. Um, Dr. Sama, your, your, uh, uh, your topic was man with a mission. And you explained how, you know, of course, the, the mission of all the prophets of Allah, uh, is to deliver the message, yes. to deliver the guidance, and not just deliver it, but in the best of manners to explain it and, you know, uh, really be clear about it. Uh, is that it? I mean, is there a mission beyond that? Once they've delivered it in the best of manners, once they've shown how it's done uh, practically with themselves, or is there is there more to it? Is there like a, a, a mission beyond that? Or you think that is it? Actually, sometimes people assume that we can exam, exam our performance by the number of people accepting the message. Uh, and the Quran al Karim uh, really mentioned otherwise. The Quran al Karim uh, mentioned to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we shouldn't be worried about the outcome. 
we should do our very best and the result in Allah's hands. So for people to accept or not, to join us or not, this is something, the uh, Quran is not my opinion. The Quran al Karim said, In alayka illa al balagh. In alayka illa al balagh. Uh, and uh, in our religion, one of the beautiful aspects that we have, that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wow. is a human, uh, can be a, a model for others. So we, we always see the Quran al Karim to be the principles of Islam. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life and the character is the implementation of, of those rules. So we can speak and give lectures about principles, but by the end of the day, people want to see uh, to see the outcome of this religion. If the financial system within our region is really beautiful and powerful, how come many Muslim countries are really in trouble financially? If Islam, as far as uh, equality, is really wonderful, why we have many Muslims, if Muslim females are struggling? If uh, the, the style of leadership in Islam is really up to speed and it is indeed how come the muslims are not doing good in certain area of the world uh, I, 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 I see a rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam a rasul the obvious achievement was that the rasul said and he did and the people follow his footstep you can uh, you can look to his action and learn from him you don't uh, a rasul was a man with a few words uh, said, well, you, you, you can even count his expressions. And uh, I, I think the Rasul conveying the message and living as an example was uh, the, 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 the powerful act, it was so powerful act and the influence everyone around him and the change the, the heart of everyone within a very short time. Uh, you can ask anyone how long have you been in America and the people will say, I've been in America for 20 years or 23 years or three or 30 years. Well, the entire uh, life of Rasul uh, as a prophet was 23 years, was not really long time. Uh, so I feel like uh, we have to have clarity when it comes to understanding implementation through example and not to be worried about the outcome. Right, right, right. So what I what I gather from uh, your response is that uh, even if we do have that knowledge and understanding and applying it at an individual level, Islam is not really an individual individualistic uh, religion, right? And that the mission of the Prophet ﷺ was not in uh, to the individuals; it was to the Muslims as a whole, as an ummah. And in fact, it was beyond the Muslims; it was for us. And, you know, uh, we, we hear this all the time that there are not going to be any prophets. So it's our mission now to continue that mission of the Prophet Sallallahu um, Alaihi Wasallam. And while, while that thought is there, I want to remind our viewers uh, about ICNA. And you're familiar probably with uh, all the different projects of ICNA, whether it's in the uh, relief where we are looking after and taking care of the weak and uh, uh, poor of society. Uh, it is Dawa where we are sharing the beautiful message of Islam uh, with those who do not know. And some of them are really angry and upset uh, about Islam. And, uh, you know, uh, the 877Y Islam hotline actually receives a lot of these calls. Alhamdulillah, the associates on the hotline are very much trained to tackle them. So in a matter of minutes where somebody's angry and, you know, fumes are coming out of their ears, uh, in a few minutes, they're calm and they're listening and they're actually, you know, accepting. And then they ask us for uh, a copy of the Quran even. So there, there are some of these examples. Just Google, uh, just go to YouTube and search for Angry Caller, Why Islam? And you'll find some of those examples. Uh, more importantly, the reason I'm mentioning these things is that we're looking for uh, the viewers here to participate and to join us in these, uh, these projects, in these uh, activities. We need your support. We need volunteers. So uh, please go to icna.org forward slash volunteer and help us by joining these projects, whether it's ICNA Relief, whether it's Helping Hand, uh, whether it's uh, Y Islam uh, and, and, you know, the ICNA Sisters, YM. All of these are projects that are there to serve uh, and, and uh, empower the Muslim community. So please help and, and volunteer with them, icna.org forward slash volunteer. Uh, and financially also support them by ikna.org forward slash donate. Um, one of the things, uh, Imam uh, uh, Rafiq, uh, I, had a, I had a question for you is, is uh, 
the people that are born into poverty in in poor households in destitute situations you know children of uh, homeless people or children of uh, broken households and they they don't have the opportunity that others have uh, was there guidance from the prophet sallam on how to empower those uh, people that are really destitute and because what we're seeing today is the poor are getting poorer and the wealthy are getting wealthier right so is there how what is the guidance from the prophet sallam from our beloved rasulullah sallam to empower uh, those people how do we practically you know is there one thing that we could do as muslims to reach out to them and to empower them can you hear me now yes imam we can okay man tell you jazakallah khair uh mashallah tabarak allah i think that um you know islam of course is a, is a holistic message uh, it begins with the um, you know the the individual opening up their heart to to recognition of the creator and then striving to establish that relationship with the creator and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the one who gives us and the ways and means to to do that and we is through the 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 Quran the revelation that came to him and through his example that we learn how to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as muslims as as we are the ones who are having the the benefit of that knowledge having the benefit and of that information that we have to present in the best in the best way we can and we know from Uh, the the sira uh, we know from you know, the quran the sunnah of the khalqih that those people whom they are marginalized they are you know, the poor the destitute those who are really experiencing hardship that they are the ones that they are more am- amenable to you know, accepting this message so we have to um you know come out of our comfort zones and 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 meet them where they are i think there's not a you know a one um you know you know one thing i can tell you that's a panacea but as as the ummatis of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have to embrace that that job we have to embrace that responsibility um you know one of the things that we strive to do through ignorant relief is to um reach out to the people where you know they are and that we recognize the value of every individual human being and that everyone has the opportunity to uh reach their potential you know, if we provide for them just some very basic necessities and yani, subhanallah and you know this is what you know, islam establishes that's why the sheikh jazallah khair was talking about the institution of zakah and how that brings a person out of um feeling that you know he's a beggar to feeling that he has you know the right to um you know to 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 participate you know in the wealth of the society so I I think that uh we have to recognize the the language that people understand and that language is compassion. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had compassion for every individual and he knew how to connect with people if they were from the destitute or if they were from you know, the 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 echelons of the society. but just having that empathy and having that compassion and having that you know intention to bring to that person what they need depending upon where they are that this i think is what we we have to um, embrace and what we have to continue to do and in, in accordance with the, the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger alayhi salatu wassalam jazakallah khair and i can relate to an example where you know mashallah ikna relief is is doing an amazing job uh and uh, you know previously uh, there was the perception that you know relief is needed overseas everybody is all well off in in the us but when you come out and and you look for them uh you know you, you're going to find uh, a lot of people who are in really uh, difficult situations and hardship and um ikna relief holds a, a back to school supplies giveaway uh, event uh, every year when it's uh, time for back to school in, in september at, uh and uh, you know I remember seeing the expressions of of the children and their parents when they were receiving the the school supplies and they were surprised in you know why are you guys doing this who are you and you know wh- why that compassion and you know our volunteers would say because it's of our, because of our faith so i think that embodiment of of uh, the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in uh, you know uh, you know in in putting that hand of compassion on the heads of uh, orphans and and, and poor is uh, much needed 
And uh, I think we are uh, almost out of time. One last question, uh, if I may. Um, Imam uh, Dr. Osama, you mentioned that our communities are, uh, you know, still we still have that uh, issue of nationalism, which Rasulullah uh, came to, uh, to abolish, right? Mm -hmm. And because of that, our hearts are divided. Our, our feelings are divided and, you know, we're, uh, we're not united. We're not unified. And uh, so uh, I think uh, our moderator is saying that our time is up, but if you can take a minute or two and uh, help us to figure out how we can uh, do away with this nationalism issue. Well, it seems like throughout the history, the Muslims will go up and down. We do really well when we practice Islam well, and then we start to sense certain trouble when we go away from Islam as a message and as, uh, 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 as teaching, uh, I, I want to recognize many improvements in many areas and the hard work for individuals. I, we don't want to be pessimistic, but I think part of the solution for us to, with a good intention and a good heart to say, you know what, we have to have self-evaluation. The issue of Arab and non-Arab, the issue of the, the struggle for certain part of member of our community to be active in our masajid. It's a discussion we have we, all of us, has, really, we have to have. And being united does not mean having an agreement. But having being united, it means that we have an agreement about, about the direction. So we all agree that we are going to Chicago. But uh, part, we, part of us maybe uh, can fly and other might drive. And if you like hiking, you are welcome to hike. <laughs> uh, the, the idea here is we agree about, the, the, we have an agreement about the goal. I think if we want to move forward, we have right. to, to give our, uh, uh, we have to have self-evaluation. We have to listen to every member, member of our community. We have always to examine our performance, keeping in mind what our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did and achieved within a very short time. I think that the leadership uh, has to reflect the community that we have. So uh, have male and female, exactly. young and old, have first and second generation in any board in any Islamic center. In, in this case, we will be proud of our diversity. Uh, when uh, uh, my, my beloved Imam Rafiq mentioned that uh, helping people around us, in Islam recognize helping people not really as a good act only, but it's a part of belief. Without helping people around you, you cannot be a true believer. It's quite astonishing, really. Wallahi la yu'min. You cannot be a true believer uh, having a wonderful dinner when everyone around you is having uh, been in trouble. I, I want to conclude with, with this. We should be proud of the achievement of Islam. Uh, in the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, this is the, toward the end of the first 100 years of Islam. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz appointed an individual for each blind person in the entire Muslim community to oh, wow. guide him or her around. Uh, around. Imagine about this. Islam reached a level of power to the point anyone in need will have someone working for him and eliminate the issue of poverty completely. And everyone and everything will feel secure around wow. us. I appreciate the, 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 the time and the, I don't want to be, I, am, we are, I guess, already yeah, over time. Uh, Jazakumullah khair for the opportunity. And the Tennessee today is having a good day. Imam, uh, Imam uh, 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 Mahdi and I are from Tennessee. Uh, for our wonderful speakers here for uh, giving us an empower, uh, empowering and very motivating uh, speech. Uh,